toilet. Blue and yellow. Blue and yellow station. Change here for line two. Doors will open on the right. Hey everyone, it is Tuesday, October 19th. The time is 4.51 p.m. and the temperature outside is around 20 degrees Celsius. And I'm here at Gloria Young Station. And there goes a southbound Line 1 train. And for this one, I'll be heading on up to street level. And for the second day in a row, I'll be going for a walk over to Jarvis Street and I'll then head south down to Front Street and then I'll make my way over to King Station. And I say that's for the second day in a row, as I was here yesterday at roughly the same time, pretty much recording the same walk. When I went to edit that video this morning, I realized that the audio that I had captured was not usable. There was a rather large or loud, I don't know if large is the right word, but loud crackling so sound that was quite persistent on the external audio. All right, I'm just gonna take my face mask off. So this is Bloor Street East. And there's a look to the west towards the intersection of Young and Bloor. And that is the Yorkville neighborhood just off in the distance. So here we go, take two. There's a photo shoot of some sort going on. You might wonder why I just didn't use the camera's audio from that walk. Well, the audio from the built-in DJI Pocket 2 is quite terrible. To the point that I'd rather re-record the walk than upload it with that audio. And yesterday, these patios were pretty much empty. was the threat of some rain later at night, which I don't think ended up being a thing. And there's a moving electric bike. That's the same bike that I have. Speaking of which, I recorded a ride on that earlier today. I went out to Etobicoke. I started at Kipling Station and I rode east across the city along Dundas Street West, and I finished up at Young, Dad, Young Dundas Square downtown. So I'll be walking a few blocks east of here until I get to Ted Rogers Way, and then I'll turn south. The northern block of Jarvis Street was renamed Ted Rogers Way back in 2009. 
that is named after the former telecommunications mogul. That's where the Rogers headquarters are. But first, I got to cross Church Street here. Just to the south of here is the Church Wellesley Village. And I'll be crossing church once more. Once I get down to front, I think I'll take front over to church. And then I'll walk up to King and take that over to King Station. There's the old Manufacturer's Life Insurance Company building. Today it's known as Manulife. And St. Paul's. Actually it turned out to be a pretty nice day. It was 11 or 12 degrees when I left my home this morning. It's warmed up considerably. It's Ted Rogers way. So I'll turn right here. Let's see if I can make this light. the home of the evil empire, that is Rogers. And once I get to Charles Street, it'll become Jarvis Street. And the street takes its name after the estate of a family that used to live along the north end of the street. There's currently some controversy in the city regarding Dundas Street. And the city council is moving to rename the street. And my guess would be if they end up going through with it, Jarvis would be the next one on the chopping block. As the Jarvis family doesn't exactly have a clean past. But of course, once you go down that rabbit hole, you're going to have to <laughs> rename dozens of streets of the city. And here's where Mount Pleasant Road begins to the south. And you can take this north all the way up to the Young Lawrence Village. That's just north of Midtown. And if I were riding my bike, heading back home to Midtown, and I wasn't recording a video, Mount Pleasant would be my preferred route. And there's a look along Charles Street East. while we wait for the light to change. Of 
or just cross like that guy did. And when I think about it, of all the major streets downtown, I have to say Jarvis would probably get my vote for being the ugliest. This northern part of Jarvis is considered a major arterial road. And it just doesn't seem to have a consistent character to it. There's low and mid-rise apartments, some rather nice older stately manors and mansions. and a number of rather unsightly buildings. And presently, it's dotted with construction. So at the front street, it's known as Lower Jarvis, and there's a water main replacement going on on the south end, so it's particularly messy down there. And recently, this entire stretch of Jarvis has been ripped up for construction. This is actually much better than it was a few weeks ago. There's the Casey House. Originally the William R. Johnston House, and that dates back to 1875. You might be thinking that's a rather nice old home. And back in the late 1800s, this was a rather affluent part of town. However, a lot of the wealth moved up into the Rosedale area. And here is Earl Place, formerly Earl Street. But what the city did to prevent through traffic was they cut the street in half. And you can see there's a dead end, or at least if you want to go straight, just off to the east there. And they renamed the western part Earl Place. It's a very urban solution to prevent through traffic. Unlike in the suburbs where you see cul-de-sacs and other inefficient designs implemented. There's the Princess Margaret Cancer Center Lodge. And just across the street there is the former Berkeley Bicycle Club. That was an old event space. And before that, it was owned by the Gooderham family of the Gooderham and Wartz Distil or Distillery, that's it, who are also the owners of the distillery district and the Flatiron Building, which is a rather iconic Toronto landmark. But it looks like the Bicycle Club closed down over the pandemic, which is a bit of a shame. There's the former home of the Massey family, Vincent Massey and Raymond Massey. And that dates back to the late 1800s. And then we have what is probably the best chain restaurant in Toronto and their flagship Keg Mansion location. And that was built in 1868 and it was known as Euclid Hall. I highly recommend a visit there if you haven't been. There are rumors that it's haunted if you believe that sort of thing. 
And here is Wellesley Street East. So just to the west of here is Church in Wellesley. That's the heart of the Church Wellesley Village. And just west of that will be Wellesley Station. And to the east, it'll run along the south end of St. Jamestown and head into Cabbage Town. And there's the Jarvis Collegiate Institute. And this property is owned by the Toronto School Board. Although I don't think it's currently an active facility. It might be. I don't see any activity here. Then again, it is 5.07 p.m. But the school itself was established in 1807. And that structure in particular was completed in 1924, according to that plaque. There's a notice for experimental learning. Technological, business, and cooperative education. So perhaps that's the current use of the facility. Certainly a rather nice old building. And here we are at Maitland. So back in 2009, City Council voted to remove the center reversible lane here. You'll notice there's no solid yellow line dividing traffic. And upon doing that, they added bike lanes Remember a few years later, upon Rob Ford taking office, the bike lanes were removed and they ended up shifting to the east over on Sherburn Street. And the reversible lanes reappeared in 2012. And you'll see this traffic sign hovering over the street, which is currently not in use due to the construction, would normally indicate an X If the lane were closed and running in the opposite direction, and I think it's just from 3.45 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. that the center lane caters to northbound traffic. And there is Canada's National Ballet School. There's also an old theater attached to that facility. I had a friend who lived in this building. He had a bachelor apartment that was on the north side. It was in the middle of the building and he didn't have a balcony. He also didn't have much in the way of natural light. I don't think he was too happy there. And 
this isn't the first time. Sure, it won't be the last time that I have to re-record a walk. Although sometimes I change it up. If the recording fails, I'll pick a different route or maybe go in the other direction. But I am pretty much doing the exact same thing I did yesterday. Although the weather's a little nicer. And I might still end up using that footage. I'll just play it in the background on one of my from at home live streams, which I typically do on my Johnny Stumbles channel, just to give that a plug. There's the old Primrose Hotel. That was converted into a student residence for Ryerson University. I think that was around 2015. And that mural is by a Spanish artist. That went in a few years ago. And this is Carlton Street. So just to the west of here is Maple Leaf Gardens. And it becomes college when you get to Young. And just to the east is Cabbage Town. There's the old Grace Church. And that church goes back to 1878. We'll take another look up at that mural. <laughs> Good idea, Johnny. Stop right where there's leaves blocking it. And these are the Allen Gardens. This whole part of the city gets its name after the Allen Gardens. It's called the Garden District. And there's a large off-leash dog area here. And there's a number of greenhouses that home or that house a botanical garden straight ahead. I think six in total. And I thought yesterday the sidewalk was open here. So it looks like I'll be cutting through the park for a bit as we take another look up at that mural. I'm trying to remember the name of the artist. I think it was Okuda San Miguel. Don't quote me on that. There's a look into the park. There's the Ramada Hotel and Suites. And for some reason, it is connected to this tower. And coming up is Gerard Street East. And over there on the northwest corner is a rather infamous Harvey's, often referred to as Hooker Harvey's, as this area was known for its people of the night back in the day. There's one of those nice old homes that's going to be part of a redevelopment. And here is the Baptist Street Church. So just to the west of here at Gerard is Ryerson University. Here's a look at that Harvey's. And this Econo Lodge here is currently functioning as a homeless shelter. I think it was one of around 19 or so hotels that the city has leased out 
for that purpose all during the pandemic. So I think a lot of people are curious to see what will happen to these facilities once the pandemic's over and those leases are up. There's a lot of construction on the east side of Jarvis. That's why I crossed over to the west side here. As you can see, even without the construction, it wouldn't exactly be the prettiest street. There's the Ontario Court of Justice. which is advertised as a hotel, although I think it's more of a rooming house. And just here on the right, it's a rather ugly building. And I always thought it was like a government facility. But it was actually home to the headquarters of a department store, and it was built in 1971 in the shape of an inverted pyramid. I think it now homes a document services center for the province of Ontario, amongst other businesses. And just behind it on Mutual Street, there's an old merchandise warehouse for Sears. I think that was the department store that called this building home. There is the Maple Leaf Sports and Entertainment Center or Entertainment Launch Pad. Not sure what exactly that facility is, but it's definitely sports related. And coming up here is Dundas Street East. This must be a row of Airbnb locks, probably for a condo right around here. There's a look at that building I find so hideous, and the warehouse that is just behind it. And if you were to head west from here, that'll take you to Dundas Square and Eaton Center as well as the intersection of Young and Dundas. It looks like this corner here will soon be home to a 41-story tower. There's a look west along Dundas. And 
just here on the left is the old Grand Hotel. Or was the old Grand Hotel. That was originally built in 1972. And it wasn't built as a hotel, it was built as a facility for the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. However, they relocated to London, I think in the early 90s. It was converted into a hotel. And there's some neat art on the side of that condo there. And now it's being redeveloped into a new condo and hotel. And just to the south of it at Shooter, there's a 35-story condo going up. Here is Shooter Street coming up. And just off to the west there is the Eaton Center. And there's the Moss Park Armory. Just on the left hand. It's not uncommon to see military vehicles in the parking lot there. And then just east of the armory is Moss Park itself and the Moss Park Towers. And I think that armory opened back in the 60s. That houses a number of different reserve units. And here is Queen Street East. I think maybe I'll pop back over to the east side of Jarvis. Look over at the financial district. And 
it. It's a rare downtown gas station as we walk past the consulate for Indonesia. Walk behind these dummies that don't know how to turn out into traffic properly. And we're at Richmond Street. I did a walk along Richmond Street East not too long ago. It's a one-way street that heads to the west, and a block to the south is Adelaide Street, which is one way in the opposite direction. Coming up is Adelaide Street East. And as we enter the St. Lawrence neighborhood, you'll notice Jarvis changes character quite a bit. It's significantly more gentrified for the south stretch. And there's St. James Park, where on the southwest corner is the rather famous cathedral. And this is Adelaide Street. There's a neat Christmas themed shop just south of here on the left somewhere. It might be south of King Street East. I'm trying to remember. Yeah, I think it is actually. St. Lawrence Hall. That was built in 1850 and it currently serves as an event venue. And there's a look west along King Street East. I'll be turning right here at Front Street East and heading along King over to church. As just south of front, Jarvis becomes Lower Jarvis. Here's that shop. Flatirons Christmas Market. the new St. Lawrence Market North being constructed. It's currently a temporary structure to the south of St. Lawrence Market. 
as functioning as the North Market. There's the St. Lawrence Market itself. I don't know why I chose to talk <laughs> as a loud cement mixer was rolling by. Oops. Usually when I walk west along front here, I'm on the south side because you get a better view of the Flatiron Building and the Financial District in the backdrop. didn't fully understand what he said, but that was well past him. I think he's with Cam H. That's a mental health care facility located over on Queen Street West. I'm on a bit of a tight schedule, otherwise I might have stopped to entertain what he had to say. And there is the Flatiron Building. You might recall earlier I walked by the Bicycle Club the former bicycle club and Gooderham House. Well, that's where the Gooderham and Wurtz Distillery was headquartered. And off in the opposite direction to the east, that's where you'd find the distillery district itself. All right, I'm just gonna cross here and then I'll head north up Church Street here. Try not to walk on the left side. There's a look along Colburn Street. St. James Cathedral. And we have arrived at King Street East once again. So I'm just gonna head over to the subway station.
There's a Queen Street East Street car, which has been diverted to King Street here. Oh, I don't think I'm supposed to be here. There's another pedestrian following me through. Well, it looks like I can squeeze through this truck here, but no. It's not going to work. <laughs> you think there'd be a sign or something? Oh, they've got the sign facing the wrong way. <laughs> there we go. I'm just going to head over to King Station. There's the new home of Google Canada, or a future new home of it. And I don't see a sign on this side that says the sidewalk is closed. Good job, construction crew. There's a look north of Toronto Street. And straight ahead is the financial district. That's a look up, Victoria. So Young Street is coming up, but there seems to be a fire engine making its way along King. There also seems to have been mounted police coming through here not too long ago. No one's been hurt. And this is Young Street. Since I'm here, we might as well take a peek up. Or <laughs> Take a peek and look north up young. I'm gonna put my mask on. I'm gonna go dip into the subway. I'll jump on the northbound Line 1 train.
Sounds like there's a train rolling in right now. And on that note, I'd like to thank you for watching this video of a walk starting at Blue Ram Station. Heading over to Jarvis and then walking south down the front. And then along front, over to Church, up to King, and over to here at King Station. If you wish to support the channel, there are links to my YouTube channel memberships available in the description, as well as Patreon. And I also have an Instagram account. Yeah, it looks like the next train is due in three minutes. So on that note, I'll end the video. Thank you for watching, guys, and I will catch you on the next one.